Hello boys and girls and welcome to Karen Reads. I'm sitting here in my living room in South Burwick with a book called Sugaring. It's exactly right for this time of year because this is when the sap is running. Let me tell you a little bit about the people who created it. Jessie Haas is the writer and she's written her other books about the two main characters in this, Grant and Nora. And Joseph Smith, who has taught painting and drawing for 30 years, so you can imagine how many paintings and drawings he's done and that he's helped to create. Okay, sugaring. Grandpa and Nora are gathering sap. Cold nights and sunny days. That's sugaring weather, says Gramp. Four buckets hang on one big maple tree. Gramp takes a bucket down and pours the sap into Nora's pail. When he hangs the bucket back on the tree, sap drips into it. Tap, tap, tap. Gramp empties more buckets into his pails. Tap, 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 tap. Come up, Gramp tells the horses and they pull the big tank closer. Their hooves sing deep in the snow. Their breath makes a cloud. Sweat rolls down from under Bonnie's collar and down Stella's nose. Those are the horses. Whoa, Gramp says. He pours the sap into the tank. One pail, two, Gramp waits while Nora drinks from the third pail, and he drinks too. Sap tastes like good, cold, sweet water. Can I give Bonnie, Bonnie and Stella a drink, Nora asks. They're working so hard. Not from the pail, Gramp says. They'll want to stop at every tree. I need them to stop where I need them to stop. Nora cups her hands. She dips some sap from the pail and she hurries to Bonnie and Stella. The sap drips through her fingers. Bonnie and Stella lick with their big pink tongues, but they only get a tiny taste. It's hard to give sap to horses, Gramp says. Never mind, they'll get plenty of hay for lunch. But they get hay all the time, Nora says. Sap is special. When the sap is all gathered, Gramp drains it into a holding tank. After lunch, he starts a fire in the sugar house. The sap from the holding tank flows into a long pan and begins to boil. Gramp tells Nora horse stories. They feed the fire and they sing songs. Slowly the sap at the end of the pan turns brown. When it's almost dark out, Gramp goes to get more wood. He gives Nora a tin cup of cream. You know what to do, he says. I'll be right back. 
Nora stands on a heavy stump, high enough to see inside the pan. She watches the brown bubbles. Are they getting higher? All at once, the bubbles lift. They almost boil over the top of the pan. But Nora is ready. She dips her finger into the cream and she flicks a tiny drop onto the bubbles. With a sigh, they whoosh back down. You can tell she and Grandpa have done this before. The horse's hooves crunch the snow. Graham drives them close to the sugar house. Whoa, he says, and hurries inside. It boiled up, Nora says. It's almost ready, Graham says. He dips his scoop into the pan and holds it up to watch the drips. The horses puff outside the door. A couple more minutes. He dips and watches dips and watches until the syrup slides off the scoop in one smooth sheet. All right, Graham says. He opens a faucet on the side of the pan. Thick brown syrup pours into a kettle. At the other end of the pan, clear new sap flows in to replace it. Gramp shuts off the faucet. He puts some syrup in a glass and sets it in the snow to cool. Nara can hardly wait to taste it. Maple syrup is even more special than sap. When the syrup is cool enough, Grandpa and Nora drink some. It's so sweet, they can only take little sips. Oh, that's good, Grandpa says. Bonnie and Stella walked through the door. Bonnie and Stella should get a taste, Nora says. They brought the sap in and they brought the wood. She pours some syrup into her hand. It's warm and sticky and it dribbles through her fingers. Nora holds her hand out to Bonnie. Careful, Gramp says. Bonnie licks and licks. She thinks maple syrup is special, too. Suddenly, Nora feels Bonnie's teeth. Ow! She pulls her hand away. Okay, Grandpa? Nora nods. Your hand was so sweet, she thought it was candy. Stella points her ears. She wants syrup too, but Nora is afraid to give her any. Tell you what, Graham says. Take this kettle of syrup to Graham and tell her we want something we can give a horse. She'll know what you mean. Graham puts the syrup on the stove, but she won't tell Nora what she's making. It'll be a surprise for you and the horses. So Nora takes supper down to Gramp, and they keep on boiling long past Nora's bedtime. When they come back, the kettle of syrup is gone, and the kitchen smells sweet and mapley. Next morning after breakfast, Gram brings a brownie pan from the pantry. Don't look yet. She cuts something into squares. Then she gives a square to Nora. Maple sugar, Nora says. 
We don't make it often, Grandma says. Maple sugar is special. But so are the horses, says Nora. She bites off a piece, and it tastes so good it makes the back corners of her mouth water. She takes two more squares from the pan. Take one for ground, too. Bonnie and Stella are hitched to the sled. They point their ears at Nora. Nora holds her hands flat so her fingers are out of the way. Bonnie's and Stella's whiskers tickle and their breath goes whoosh. Their long lips fumble up the sugar. Crunch, crunch, crunch. They nod their heads as they chew. Happy now, Gramps says. Yes, says Nora. She climbs up beside him. Graham gives her the reins, and she gives him his piece of maple sugar. Then they drive out to the woods to get more sap. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you've seen some houses around the area where they have maple sap on uh, pails hooked up to the maple trees. Until next week, I'll see you soon.